The Chiefs are getting ready to play maybe the game of the 2018 season to this point. I got your Chiefs game plan for the Jacksonville Jaguars coming right now. Welcome back to RGR Football. I am Ryan and I'm going rogue and this is about the Kansas City Chiefs, the NFL and the AFC West, not necessarily in that order. Uh, the Chiefs are looking at probably their biggest opponent to date of this 2018 season. They've already kind of gone over a couple of hurdles at this point between the Steelers and now the Broncos at home on a roll for sure. And the Mahomes performance of last week has got him in the midst of a lot of MVP talk. So we're gonna get to all that, but we're gonna talk Jaguars today. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell notification and leave that thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. That helps us get found by a lot of other football fans and that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, wanna get your comments. If you have a feeling about this game or anything else, leave it in the comments below and we'll get that conversation started. Now, I got four points for you and we're gonna start right off the bat about how to attack this vaunted Jacksonville defense. Uh, and, you know, the the way they go, Mahomes, Andy Reid, they want to throw the ball. As much as I would love if they would, you know, run 40 times, it's just not going to happen. When they want to throw the ball, they have to look at these safeties. Um, the safeties are decent. Uh, they've had success elsewhere, but they're just not athletic enough to keep up with the players that the Chiefs have on offense. And we're going to see some clips and, you know, they're going to mix their coverages. Um, they are a classic cover three team, and they'll do that. And they're going to try to uh, mix it up and maybe disguise it some, a lot like what we saw against the Broncos as well. But that puts them in a dangerous position uh, in trying to fake one way, make that change, and still be in your position to run with the athletes that the Chiefs have. It can get them in trouble, and it's something that we have to pay particular attention to. I expect the Chiefs to be scheming to attack the middle of the field down deep when they get a chance, and it's all about whether the protection will hold up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the other interesting thing is there's been a lot of talk about this Jalen Ramsey and Tyreek Hill matchup. Uh, I think it's going to be maybe not that even, but Jalen Ramsey seems to disagree with me. I'm looking forward to playing, playing the game. I'm looking forward to playing their offense, seeing our defense against their offense. I don't like how, uh, you know, whoever has made it a matchup, me against Tyreek. Um, He's good for what he does for their team. Uh, you know, he made all pro as a return specialist. Let's get that right. As a return specialist, uh, his rookie year, he went to two Pro Bowls as a return specialist. Return specialist. Um, two years, I, I made all pro in my position as a corner. Uh, went to the Pro Bowl as a corner. Um, so it's not a wide receiver versus corner matchup. So as good as Jalen Ramsey is, and he clearly thinks he's good, uh, he has a tendency to be a little overconfident, I think. He's had some trouble this season in his attitude with his teammates, etc. cetera. Um, and when you look at this clip, there are ways to get on him. He's playing off a little bit here in a man cover kind of position. And if you think you're the best CB in this league, well, you should be able to cover Chris Hogan. He can't cut like Tyreek Hill. Honestly, he can't leap like Chris Conley. So there's some matchups there that are there to be had even against the vaunted Jalen Ramsey. But he is not so sure about that. We're going to see this come down to it, and I think that's going to be a matchup to watch. Whether he shadows or not is going to be something about it. But again, I think the safeties in the middle of the field are something that they need to attack. Now, when they're running, there's a couple of things that I think are going to bode well. And they need to run to the left side. It's just it's just the way that they have to go. When they attack this defense, it doesn't matter really who's there. It looks like there's a pretty good rotation over the last few games. And the good thing is that the weakness that I found on film is mostly a, a staple run that the Chiefs use all the time. They like to run zone. And we see a couple of examples of both uh, an interior cut as well as the outside zone that can get yardage against this Jaguars defense. And maybe that's uh, in the disguise, maybe it's just in the personnel matchups, but they seem to be rotating players on that uh, left side of the offense, right side of the defense, in order to try and figure that out. I expect the Chiefs to use this in the run game. Uh, maybe a little bit of the power that we saw last week, but a lot of zone, I think, is going to eventually pay off. It's going to be, in my opinion, Kareem Hunt... Uh, bang, bang, bang for a couple of yards and then pop, he'll get one. So 
look for that. Now, point number three, the offense on the passing side for the Jaguars is going to see this Chiefs defense that they think they can get yards on. And the offense is going to flow through Bortles as well. And Bortles is kind of up and down. You can get both sides of him. I called it Jekyll and Hyde earlier this week on the Locked on Chiefs podcast. So check that out if you missed it. Now, along with Bortles, really what I think they want to focus on is D.D. Westbrook. They use him in a lot of different ways, in some shallow crosses, uh, a lot of motion responsibility. Going to be a big, big deal. Um, now, that said, if you can get a jam on him, it helps. He runs a lot of routes out of the slot. So hopefully you can get Kendall Fuller on him uh, in a man-on-man -man situation. And that's a great matchup for the Chiefs and what they want to get done. But that passing game has a couple others. In Moncrief, in Allen, there are other guys that can, they can go to. But I still think the focus is going to be Westbrook. Knowing where he is on every play is something not only for the Chiefs to understand, but for you to watch while you're seeing that game. Uh, it's going to give you a clue as to how they're approaching attacking this Chiefs defense. And key number four is probably the biggest one. For this Chiefs defense and the way it's built, the way that it's been attacked successfully in the past, TJ Yeldon is really the biggest threat that I see in trying to let the Jaguars hang with the offense of the Chiefs. And a lot of folks feel like Getting Fournette uh, out of this game, and he is going to be out, the Chiefs are not going to face him, it is a big plus. And it is. He's a great running back. Uh, it does save them from, from his talent. But TJ Yeldon's no slouch either. And the difference is, I think most in particular, that TJ Yeldon's a dual threat. He can run inside. Uh, he's got, had a lot of success over the right guard. Uh, and that's something that I think... The inside linebacker to that side, probably the strong side a majority of the time, has to be keying on that being his gap of responsibility. And TJ Yeldon can work over there, but he can also get around the edge on the left side. And that's something that, especially as the Chiefs rotation goes through the outside linebackers, you have to make sure that you're setting the edge on that left side. Whether that comes down to Tano Passanio or Breland Speaks or whoever's going to be in there. That's a place... The TJ Yeldon can get outside on you and make a lot of yardage. So those are the two keys in the run game. But he's even worse in the pass game. He is a guy that can start in the backfield and really destroy a defense. Down the middle, across the middle, gets loose. And this Chiefs defense has been poor in guarding against the pass to running backs. They have to figure that out. I don't know that Hitchens is a guy that can play this man anymore. They, they either have to stay in a straight zone and they have to keep their heads on a swivel and their eyes open for that, or they have to look at another option. And I think after last week, we saw Dorian O'Daniel play some snaps. And I think he is uniquely talented to come in on passing downs and personally be accountable for that running back. He can run with Yeldon. He understands the pass game. He understands how to attack the ball, not just the man. And I think this might be the key to getting Dorian O'Daniel on the field is this matchup is something he is uniquely qualified to tackle, quote unquote, uh, better than any of the other linebackers that he's lined up with. I don't know that they want to put a safety in that position. So I'm really looking to see, I would play him, but will the Chiefs? I think that's a great matchup for them to try to exploit. So at the end of the day, those are the keys. Let me know what you think. What are you looking for? Leave them down in the comments, and we'll talk about it after the game. I will be live a few hours after the game, right about uh, half an hour or so before the Sunday Night Football. So check out YouTube Live then, and I'll be back with you. Thanks for watching now, and I'll talk to you next time.